So, a new version of Across the Spider-Verse was sent to movie theaters earlier this week to fix sound mixing errors in the film. I and many others noticed this pretty much right away, so it's nice it's getting fixed. Not really related to what we're talking about today, but I just think it's pretty interesting to see a literal bug fix happen for a movie. But of course, let me know in the comments if you can think of any other movies that have had actual bug fixes. Anyway, back to the video. I've seen Across the Spider-Verse a lot of times. Five times to be exact. And while watching, I found something that stood out to me that I feel like I need to talk about. Something that made me question the true intentions of our vampire Spider-Man Miguel O'Hara. Spoiler alert by the way for Across the Spider-Verse. Like I said, a new version was just sent to theater so now's the perfect time to watch it. Anyway, throughout my several thorough scans through this movie, a ton of things stood out to me that didn't make a lot of sense. But there's one in particular that I want to talk about. Around an hour and a half into the movie, Miguel O'Hara, or Spider-Man 2099, explains something very interesting to Miles. He says that every spider person has points in their lives that are essential to their respective universe's existence as a whole these being called canon events. He goes on further to explain that if these canon events are disrupted or prevented, the entire dimension will unravel and cease to exist. We actually see this happen at some point in the movie with another universe. But what doesn't make sense to me is something Miguel says to him later on in the big chase scene with all the spider people. He says that the spider that bit Miles wasn't from his dimension, which is factual as evident by the spider glitching, which only happens when something's in the wrong dimension. But that's not the part that's odd. What's odd is what happens next. Miguel tells Miles that the spider wasn't meant for him. That the reason his Peter Parker died was because he got bit when he wasn't supposed to. So then, who was the spider meant for? I actually believe that Miles Morales from Earth 42, the Miles we see at the very end of the movie, was meant to be bitten and our Miles was meant to be the Prowler. Now this may sound crazy, but there are a couple very small details that actually prove this to be the case. Earlier in the movie, when Spot is explaining his origin story, we see Earth-42 Miles about to be bitten by the spider, only for it to be warped into Earth-1610 by mistake. This in turn causes the spider to bite our Miles instead, which sets off a chain of events that changes the entire course of these characters' lives. Now, you may be thinking, okay, so you've proven that Earth-42 Miles was supposed to be bitten, but how does that in any way prove that our Miles, the pure soul that he is, was originally destined to be the supervillain criminal that is the Prowler? Well, there's one very, very small detail in the first movie that a lot of people overlooked. A detail that, when looked at in the context of the new movie, starts to take on a whole new meaning entirely. What am I talking about? Well, a lot of you may remember the scene from Into the Spider-Verse where Miles wanders into the Collider Room and him and Spider-Man meet for the first time and their spider senses bounce off each other. Well, pay very close attention to the colors that appear on screen for Miles. They start off green and purple, then shift to red and blue, reflecting Miles' change in destiny. So why am I telling you all this? What does this have to do with the canon events? Well, there's something else that Miguel explains to Miles that I didn't mention. Right after he explains what canon events are, he goes on to tell Miles about anomalies, changes or disruptions in the canon. He says that anomalies are very dangerous and could destroy the very dimension they're in. And worst of all, that Miles himself is an anomaly. But not just an anomaly, the original anomaly. He's the cause of all the other anomalies because he's the one that changed the timeline to begin with. By being bitten by the spider instead of Earth-42 Miles, he apparently caused all these additional anomalies to occur. And when Miguel explains it in the movie, it makes a lot of sense. Spider was meant to bite someone else, but it got warped away last second, biting him instead, which caused Earth-42 Miles to become the Prowler instead of Earth-1610 Miles. But if our Miles is an anomaly, why is he included in the canon events? Why do we see Uncle Aaron's death included in the holograms? And more importantly, if Miles is the original anomaly and anomalies destroy the dimension that they're in, why is Earth 1610 perfectly fine? Why isn't there a huge black hole in the middle of Miles' dimension? Miguel says that the spider wasn't supposed to bite him and that because that happened, Miles changed the canon. So why has nothing happened? And meanwhile, in Mumbatton, when we disrupted a canon event, we immediately saw negative effects. So why does that dimension unravel and Miles is doesn't. 
it just doesn't make any sense. And let's talk more about that canon event that we apparently disrupted, because there's a huge problem that I don't think anyone noticed. For those who don't know, around halfway into the movie, Miles saves Inspector Singh from falling rubble. And after Miles receives his accolades and all is well for a minute, a notification pops up on Gwen's watch. They had just disrupted a canon event. They then get called into HQ where Miguel is and he explains to the group what canon events are, and the consequences of disrupting one. But at least to me, his explanation makes no sense. Maybe I'm just stupid, but hear me out. He says that Miles ruined the canon event just by being there, but the most important thing that Miguel fails to realize is that the canon event wouldn't have happened at all if not for Miles being there. Spot was the one that activated the collider. Spot is the one that destroyed the Alchemex building that almost crushed Inspector Singh. And before you say he would have been there anyway even without Miles, that clearly isn't the case, because during the spider people's fight against the spot, he's clearly prioritizing Miles. He's after him specifically. He's his nemesis. So it would make sense for him to be wherever Miles is. If Miles wasn't there to begin with, neither is the spot. And without the spot, no canon event. It just really seems like any way you slice it, the truth remains the same. None of this would have happened at all without Miles' presence. So Miguel is just flat out wrong when he says it's Miles' fault the cannon was disrupted. Yeah sure, he saved Inspector Singh, but Inspector Singh would have never needed saving if Miles, and by extension the spot, were never there. To me, it just really seems like Miguel is wrong about this whole cannon events thing. But let's just stop for a second, obviously I'm being stupid. Let's remember who we're talking about here. This is Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, the supposed leader of the Spider Society. Surely he has to have the answers, right? Well, in reality, he shouldn't even be called Spider-Man. He has no spider sense. He doesn't even seem to have any spider powers at all. He doesn't stick to walls. He doesn't use webs. He has a cape. And as we know, that's disrespectful. And most importantly of all, he doesn't share the same canon events as all the other spider people. He has a completely different story. When you think about it, it makes zero sense for him to be the leader of this huge army when he himself is almost nothing like them. He doesn't even have a no-killing policy. I mean, he doesn't actively try to kill people, but it's definitely not off the table for him. There's just so much of this that isn't adding up. He has to be lying to us, or at least is wrong about how this whole thing works. But honestly, with the way things seem to be shaping up, I wouldn't be surprised if we get some pretty shocking revelations involving Miguel and Beyond the Spider-Verse. I guess we won't really know for sure until we see. This movie is honestly incredible. I've seen it five times and I was on the edge of my seat every single time. Every shot is just gorgeous. You really need to see it for yourself. It is without a doubt my favorite Spider-Man movie of all time and I can't recommend it enough. But anyway guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and while you're already down there, might as well subscribe and hit the bell so you know when more videos come out. Alright guys, that's it from me. I love every single one of you with all my heart. Thank you so much for watching.